Hey Sparkly Beans, um, I have a, a quick thought for you, a question, an inquiry, an observation around relationships and keeping track of the people in your life. Um, if you're new here, hi, my name is Avery and I help uh, justice-aligned, neurodivergent, and nerdy humans to cultivate ease and self-trust for growing into our emerging future. So this question came to me because I was um, making plans to check in with one of my sweeties. Um, I'm a relationship anarchist, solo polyamorous. Um, I have various relationships of various kinds, including multiple um, romantic relationships. And a lot of the people that I'm in relationship with um, don't live anywhere near me. I'm also fully locked down for context. So, uh, so I don't like see people. I don't have like the, <laughs> going out and doing things kinds of um, like ways of uh, interacting with people in my life. And so um, I was thinking about this because one of my sweeties and I were, were trying to reschedule. We had, um, we actually have a monthly call on the calendar, which does great for me. Um, and I sort of realized something interesting about the way my brain does or doesn't remember to interact with people, the people in my life. Because this is someone who um, has been in my life for a very long time. We're very close. I love her very much. Um, I really enjoy, you know, uh, spending time in conversation with her, spending time in person with her. But we don't necessarily have like a particular like shared interest or hobby. Like we sort of do. We have some overlap in like spiritual interests. We have some overlap in like general sort of growth mindset. Um, you know, uh, being interested in like our sort of development mutually and, um, and, and some of the same, like, frameworks for knowing. Like, we've taken tarot classes at the same time, for example, before um, we actually met uh, through through a queer, um, like, bodywork workshop. So, you know, there's certainly some overlap there, but this isn't someone who I would say, like, particular topics ping to me. It's like, that's the person to talk about this thing with. It's more... Um, that we're just present with each other and we're we're checking with each other. And I don't have that many people, I realize this, I don't have that many people in my life like that. Like a lot of the people in my life are sort of in my head, they're cued to a particular topic or interest. And I started wondering, like, how do neurotypical people do this? Because, so if you're neurotypical, I'm really curious, um, or if you, you know, vaguely, I mean, who's neuro, like, no, what is neurotypical anyway, but like, if if you um, if you generally don't think of yourself, don't don't think it's likely that you're um, ADHD or autistic specifically, because those are the things that I those are my neurodivergencies. Um, or if you're generally neurotypical as well, like I'd, I'd be curious to know um, from you, because I'm just fascinated. I'm like, how do how do brains work? Because what I realized is we were trying to reschedule, and um, I made the fatal error of being like, I'll ping you after I have a call with so-and-so, you know, I can probably talk with you as well. And of course I completely forgot. There was nothing in my calendar because it wasn't like a definite time. It was a, I'll ping you. Some of my other systems are in kind of disarray right now or are being reformed. And so I didn't have like a place that I write down, like this is a thing and you need to remember to do it today, but the exact time doesn't matter. None of that happened. And so, um, you know, wasn't a problem or anything, but, but this, Sweetie just got in touch with me a couple days later. It was like, hey, we're going to do a thing. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Um, and I, I was like, hmm, what is it that prompts me to stay in relationship, to, like, actively be present and to, like, message and reach out to people, to certain people in my life, and not to others? even though there is not necessarily a preference. Like, it's not that, like I said, this is somebody I've been, uh, we're like getting close to a decade now that we've been together. Um, I feel very warm, strong feelings. Uh, 
and really enjoy being in the presence of, of this person. But for some reason, like, I don't, it doesn't just pop into my head, like, I haven't reached out to you in a little bit, we should talk. And in fact, it was really good for our relationship um, because I would go long periods of time. And so now in retrospect, I'm going, oh, that's probably why that happened. I go long periods of time without reaching out to her and that understandably didn't feel good and she wanted some more consistency. So we put a monthly call on our calendars and that's been actually really good for us. And we've been doing that for maybe two years now, three years. Um, that's been really good because there's something in my calendar that's like, we're checking in. We do it usually. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we reschedule. Um, we started like communicating on a video messaging app and that works pretty well as well. But I'm not going to video message. And in fact, on this app, generally, the way I use the app is I pull it up and I see who's messaged me and I respond. I send a message and they respond, right? And so if I don't have a message waiting, I will probably not reach out to the person. Um, if I don't have a text, right? I Like, nothing goes boom, boom, boom. I suspect that this is everyone. Like, I don't know that neurotypical people necessarily have in their brain some sort of magical cue that says, you know, Frank is someone I haven't talked to in a while. I need to do that. But maybe they do. Um, and even if, even if they don't, I think maybe this is exacerbated if you have, um, especially like exacerbated by the, so ADHD kind of situational awareness can be missing. And I find that because ADHD brains are highly associative thinkers, um, that we're often, and it's part of why we're so distractible because it's like, we both don't really notice what's going on in our environment a lot of the time, especially things that aren't novel. We totally miss, it's really hard, you know, when I work with ADHD folks, like, um, as a neuroemergence guide, like, one of the things that, you know, I'm often, like, we're often talking about is how to balance so that you have novel stimuli when you want to notice something. Because if it's not novel, so that could be like the notification bell that goes off at the same time every day. Often, very quickly, for an ADHD person goes to background noise, don't care. Um, if you, you know, have something in front of your computer that's supposed to remind you, if that's there every day, it's going to like disappear from you. Um, so, I, you know, I'll, I'll recommend like fun little playful things like, I don't know, like every time you're done with the task, like you stick like something really weird on top of the thing you're supposed to remember. Cause you'll be like, why the fuck is there a stuffed turtle there? And you're like, right, the stuffed turtle was, you see what I'm saying? Um, so we don't notice the things that are the same, but then like sometimes we'll just be like, oh, thing. And then like, we have to do the thing. Um, and that's often like ADHD brain can be very sort of, um, I mean, both in the moment and not in the moment, but in the moment in that way of like, I see something and, and I'll do it. Um, and out of sight, out of mind. And so with people, what I was noticing is that there's this associative pattern of like, I remember to talk to people if something made me think of that person. Or if it's on my calendar, like if it's a regular thing. And maybe this is part of the challenge of COVID is that like when we were out and about, I would be regular. Well, one, I would be regularly having invitations to respond to others. So like someone will invite you to, s they're doing something, right? I would be like, oh, I would like to go do something. I mean, I didn't do this as much. I'm pretty introverted. But like, I, I still might be like, I want to do something. Who could I do it with? You know, maybe as an introvert, it's going to be one person. Other people might say, I need a group of people. But like, even, even like, I like board games. So I'd be like, who would I invite to a board game party? There were a lot of like opportunities to just pull together the people who are at least physically nearby um, that I don't have anymore. But, and then, you know, for some people, you might have something on the calendar. But like for everybody else, the way my brain does it is that something will spark that name. So it'll be like, um, 
I'm reading something and I think, wow, so-and-so, you know, this reminds me of a conversation with so-and-so, or this reminds me of something we've talked about before, or I feel like this person would like this book. I'm going to recommend it to them. Um, and, and maybe this is especially as an introvert, like I'm, I'm often spending a lot of my time and energy on things like reading, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, a, a lot of like mind-based stuff. Um, you know, obviously doing my own work and writing and stuff. And so social isn't a category that I'm like, do the social. I mean, that, that would be one option, right? I'm sure I could like say, you know, like, here's my you know, list of, and I've, I've done that before. I've tried to do that before, actually, is having a list of like, these are the people I want to try to keep in regular touch with. And then go to that, I never go to that list and it doesn't work that way for me. Um, like I forget to look at it or I just, I don't know, I just don't. So, so what works better is that if things in my very solitary, internal, mindy life um, ping for me, that they go with someone, then I reach out to them. So I like have, these are the, you know, this is the friend. And often this is the autistic part, I think, is like, it's a special interest thing where like this is a friend that like I, I tend to go to if I notice something about astrology this is the friend I tend to go this is a friend that I know that likes to theorize about astrology and so I'm going to bring up theories about astrology this is the friend that um you know we we've been talking about x recently and so stuff about x goes to that friend um I can't think of other examples but you know what I mean And I've had people in my life where they don't necessarily go with a category or go with like a kind of information or you know, this would interest this person. But those people, if they stay consistent, tend to be the kind of people who always message first. They tend to be the kind of people who will just randomly ping and say, how are you? I thought of you. And I think sometimes as a, as a neurodivergent person, I feel like maybe I'm a jerk. Uh, I know I'm not a jerk, but like, you know, I can feel like, man, I'm a jerk. Cause like, I don't randomly think of people. I don't, I don't like, I'm not just like sitting here interacting with nothing and think, aha, uh -huh, like I should talk to Frank, you know? Um, that just doesn't, so I'm curious, like, if you're watching this, do you do that? Does that happen? Do things ping to you for no reason? Or do, do you like habitually go through your brain and be like, who haven't I talked to in a while? Is there a list? Or <laughs> probably there's not a list. Um, or is it, or do you have it more like me where, where it's like something has to remind you of like a memory or a, or a fact or a thing or a, you know, interest or a this or that. And has that changed for you with COVID? And I know a lot of people have opened back up. So like you might have noticed both directions. Like, is it easier when you have stuff you're doing um, that makes you think, oh, it's time for people now? Or am I just, I mean, I may just be really, like this is a very autistic thing to be like, let me analyze and trying to understand how social works. Uh, and I think it's a, I mean, it's a good self-awareness practice, right? Because I can be honest in, in relationship building with this, that it's like, you know, it doesn't mean I like you any less, but like, if we, if we don't tend to have the kinds of conversations that are very nerdy and very specific and like, you know, this is the thing, um, and we just sort of enjoy spending time in each other's company, then I'm very unlikely to to think to reach out to you unless I happen to like see a photo of you for some reason, right? And then it's like, oh yeah, that person, right? That person exists, I care about them. Um, then I might, I might jump to it. Or even, I mean, it can be as innocuous, it's not always as intellectual, it can be as innocuous as like, 
I read a fan fiction and I know that like this person likes fan fiction and likes this particular kind of fan fiction. Um, but yeah, if I don't have that kind of, and I think in make, building relationships with people, like I'm always looking for like, what is the, what is the thing to grab? Uh, and ideally what is the thing to grab that I don't already have a lot of people who are already interested in the same thing? Because then it becomes, here are my five people that I talk about this with, and, you know, um, you can rotate, but, like, it's not always as ideal. If you're the person who says, hi, how are you? How, what, how, how does that work? Okay, great. So that's been, that's been, um, some thoughts some thoughts about um, relationships and tracking relationships and autism and ADHD and neurodivergence in general and how do neurotypical brains work. So if you have any thoughts or like insights or you just want to share your experience in this regard, I would be super fascinated. Um, if you if you like this kind of random rambling sort of thoughts about life from an ADHD brain that's confused, I, I could do more. Um, if you don't, <laughs> that's okay too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's that on that. Think about who you haven't reached out to in a while. Give them a ping. <laughs>